Imagine for a moment that everything you believe about the end times is closer than you realize. While many live as if they have all the time in the world, God is sending clear and powerful warnings. But are you listening? The world is steeped in distractions. The fame, the fortune, the temptations that Satan offers seem more attractive than ever. But there is one truth that no one can ignore. We are in spiritual warfare and the choices we make now will determine our eternity. Is it worth risking the soul for a temporary pleasure? If you're seeking answers to what's going on around you, if you feel like something big is about to happen, then pay close attention. This video is no longer an empty warning. It carries the weight of what is to come. The Bible is full of promises and warnings, but few have eyes to see. And that's precisely why God is calling you now, at this moment. Have you ever wondered why so many are seduced by fame and wealth, even though they know that none of it will bring peace? There is a reason, and it is much deeper than you might think. This is God's last warning, and the question you need to ask is, will you listen? At the end of this video, we will offer a powerful prayer that can transform your life. But until then, I challenge you to stay until the end and see with your own eyes what's going on. It's not too late to change the course of your story, but the clock is ticking. Spiritual warfare is a reality that many Christians do not realize in their daily lives. The Bible warns us that our struggle is not against flesh or blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual forces of evil that operate around us. For many, this battle may seem distant, confined to ancient stories or specific locations. But the truth is that it occurs all the time, even in our own communities. There are dark events such as satanic rituals and occult practices happening both globally and locally. And as Christians, it is our duty to be attentive to these realities, vigilant not to fall into the subtle traps that Satan places before us. These shady practices are not limited to movies or conspiracy theories. There is a real influence at work in our world, and ignoring it is dangerous. When we get used to living our routine without discerning the darkness around us, we become easy targets. Imagine an army that doesn't know it's at war. That's the situation for many Christians today. The spiritual warfare described in Ephesians 6.12 shows us that the power of Satan and his demons is real, but this should not frighten us. Instead, it should wake us up. We are called to be light in the world, and light only shines when it faces darkness. Have you ever stopped to think about how this war can be present even in the small daily decisions you make? Many may question how this evil influence could come so close to their lives, but the answer lies in the examples the Bible gives us. Satanic rituals and the occult are just the tip of the iceberg. Satan works in more subtle ways, infiltrating our routines through entertainment, finances, and moral commitments that at first glance seem harmless. Therefore, the appeal here is for everyone to open their eyes. Temptations can come disguised as good things, promises of pleasure and immediate success, but at a high price. As Mark 8.36 says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? One of the most effective ways to protect ourselves against these pitfalls is by strengthening our connection with God. Constant prayer, Bible study, and fellowship with other Christians help us discern the works of darkness around us. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he did not confront Satan with earthly weapons, but with the Word of God. This is a teaching for all of us. We must know the scriptures deeply to resist the evil influences that try to lead us away from God's grace. Like Jesus, we too are tempted daily, and our strength comes from standing firm in knowledge and faith. Satanic rituals and practices that take place in secret may often seem distant, but the reality is that Satan's influence may be much closer than we realize. A practical example is in the entertainment industry, where subtle messages are conveyed, often glorifying what is contrary to the teachings of Jesus. This affects us directly, shaping values and beliefs imperceptibly. The Bible tells us to be vigilant, because the enemy prowls about like a lion looking for someone to devour. It is not only the big global events that we should pay attention to, but the small everyday choices that can lead us closer or further away from God.
It is interesting to observe how, throughout history, Satan has always tried to corrupt what is good. From the Garden of Eden, where he deceived Adam and Eve to the present day, the strategy is the same, to distort God's truth. The same is true of modern occult rituals, which often attempt to mimic genuine spiritual power that comes from God. These rituals, while frightening to some, are just an extension of Satan's ongoing rebellion against God. What he doesn't want you to know is that in Christ, you already have the victory. The plea here is for you not to underestimate the power of prayer and faith, even in the face of the deepest darkness. Spiritual warfare is an invisible battle, but its effects are visible in every aspect of society. Have you noticed how many celebrities and public figures get involved in corruption scandals, abuse of power, and in some cases, occult practices? This is not a mere coincidence. Often what starts with small moral compromises ends up turning into something much bigger and more dangerous. This is why it is vital for Christians to remain vigilant and committed to God's values, avoiding the traps that Satan places along the way. By understanding the reality of this spiritual warfare, we are challenged to take an active stance. We cannot be passive spectators. Jesus himself, when tempted by Satan, gave us the example of resistance. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, facing the enemy directly and showing that even at the height of physical weakness, spiritual strength wins. This example shows us that regardless of the circumstances around us, we can triumph if we are grounded in God's word. And here's the key to facing the darkness around us, not with fear, but with faith. The Bible is clear in warning us about the nature of our spiritual warfare. In Ephesians 6.12, Paul teaches us that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of wickedness. This verse is a powerful reminder that the real enemy is not the people around us, but the unseen forces at work in the darkness. As we saw earlier, Jesus also faced these forces during the temptation in the wilderness as recorded in Matthew 4, where Satan tried to seduce him with promises of earthly power. This is a clear example of how Satan acts, offering what seems to be advantageous, but at the expense of spiritual commitments. In Matthew 4, we see Jesus fasting for 40 days and nights, a time of spiritual preparation before facing Satan. And the first temptation is one we all know, the immediate satisfaction of a physical need. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread, says Satan. Jesus, however, responds with God's word, showing that spiritual food is more important than any earthly desire. The lesson here is clear. Satan will always try to exploit our weaknesses, offering quick and easy solutions to our problems, but which lead us away from God's true way. The second temptation, where Satan offers Jesus all earthly power, is particularly relevant to us today. Satan takes Jesus to a high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world, saying, All these things will I give you, if you will fall down and worship me. This offering reveals the extent of Satan's power over the affairs of the world. He has the ability to offer fame, wealth and influence, but always at a price. Many succumb to these promises, trading their spiritual integrity for temporary success. Here, Jesus teaches us that no earthly glory is worth it if the cost is our soul. This kind of temptation is evident in our world. The desire for power, fame and fortune has led many people to compromise their principles, and sometimes even their faith. This can be seen in the entertainment industry, where celebrities engage in morally questionable behavior in exchange for recognition and wealth. The Bible warns us of these pitfalls, showing that true wealth lies in our eternal salvation and our relationship with God. Like Jesus, we must be ready to reject Satan's offers, no matter how attractive they may seem at the time. A crucial point in the story of the temptation of Jesus is the way he responds to Satan. Jesus does not try to argue or debate. Instead, he uses God's own word as his defense. It is written, he repeats over and over again, showing that knowledge of scripture is our greatest weapon against the spiritual forces of evil. Like Jesus, we must be equipped with biblical truths so that we can resist the lies and deception that the enemy tries to impose on us. That's the power we have, a power that comes from faith and the knowledge of the Word. 
But we often forget to use this power. The fight against temptations is not easy, and Satan is a cunning adversary. He knows our weaknesses and exploits them, trying to make us believe that the easiest way is the best. However, as Jesus showed in the wilderness, God's way is not always the simplest, but it is the only one that leads to true freedom and peace. As the Apostle Paul describes in 1 Corinthians 10.13, God is faithful and will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear, but with the temptation he will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Another important aspect that Matthew 4 teaches us is about Satan's persistence. Even after Jesus resisted the first and second temptations, Satan did not give up. He returned a third time, tempting Jesus to test God's faithfulness. This shows us that spiritual warfare is not a one-time struggle. It's an ongoing battle. We need to be constantly vigilant and prayerful because the enemy does not give up easily. He will continue to attack us, hoping to find a moment of weakness. That is why we must follow Jesus' example and stand firm, always armed with God's word. Ultimately, what we can learn from these temptations is that Satan offers what appears to be a shortcut to success, but one that leads us to perdition. He promises power, fame, and fortune, but at the cost of our souls. Jesus shows us that true victory is not in giving in to temptations, but in resisting them with faith and trust in God. If Jesus, the Son of God, was tempted and overcome, we too can overcome, because we have the same word of God in our hands, and it is this same word that will guide us in all the spiritual battles we face throughout our lives. It is undeniable that Satan wields a certain amount of power over earthly affairs, and this is evident in Jesus' own words and in the biblical events presented to us. Jesus himself called him the Prince of this world, John 12, 31, acknowledging his influence. However, we must remember that Satan's power is limited and permitted by God. Their authority is real but temporary and is confined to the material realm. In moments like the temptation in the desert where Satan offers Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth, we see how much he can influence the spheres of power, wealth and fame. Satan's authority is exercised primarily over the hearts of those who turn away from God. He offers earthly riches and glories in exchange for people's souls, and many end up giving in to these illusory promises. He controls aspects of entertainment, politics, finance, and we often see the impact of his actions in great tragedies and corruptions. But it is important to note that although he offers power, his intention is always the same, to destroy. The Bible reminds us in 1 Peter 5, 8, that Satan walks around us like a roaring lion, seeking to devour someone. This power that Satan wields can be seen in many areas of modern life, it offers success and fame to those who are willing to compromise on its principles. Think of the example of celebrities who have achieved wealth and notoriety, but who in the process have lost their integrity and even their lives in many cases. The Bible warns that a thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, John 10.10, 10, and that is exactly what Satan does when he offers earthly power. He seduces with promises of greatness, but in the end, his offerings lead to destruction. However, it is important to remember that this power only has an effect on those who allow themselves to be deceived. Jesus, when tempted, did not yield to Satan's promises, for he knew that true power belongs to God. Like Jesus, we can also resist. Satan's power, while impressive, is fragile in the face of God's strength. Faith in Christ gives us the discernment to identify these pitfalls and the power to resist them. A practical example of this is in keeping our moral commitments firm, even when the temptations of the world try to lead us astray. Satan tries to make immediate pleasures seem irresistible. It offers instant fame, quick wealth and effortless success, but these promises always come with a profound spiritual cost. Think about the cases of people who sought success at all costs, only to lose everything. It's not just a financial downfall, but a loss of purpose and soul. The cost of following Satan is very high, and many only realize it too late. The Bible warns us that what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Mark 8.36 The Bible offers us a clear vision of how to resist Satan's power. 
James 4, 7 teaches us, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This submission to God is the secret to overcoming the temptations that Satan puts in our path. No matter how attractive the offer, when we are firm in our faith, we are able to resist. Just like Jesus in the wilderness, we must use God's word to confront the enemy, rejecting his false promises and trusting that God will give us what we truly need. An interesting point is that Satan's power is also limited by God's power. At no time does he have total control, for God always has the last word. Satan may try to lead us astray with promises of success, but God has already promised us something infinitely better, eternal salvation. As Christians, we are called to trust God and not the empty promises that the world offers. This confidence gives us peace in the midst of temptation and the strength to face life's challenges with hope. In the end, what we can learn about Satan's power is that he is a shadow of the true power, which is God's. Satan's temptations are like shiny traps, but empty inside. He can offer the world, but the cost is always the loss of the soul. And as Jesus showed us, even when we are in our physical and emotional weakness, we can resist temptations with the strength that comes from God. The real victory, therefore, lies in following God's will, knowing that he has ultimate control over all things, while Satan can only operate within the limits that God allows. When we look at the modern world, especially the entertainment industry, we can see a clear reflection of the temptations Jesus faced in the wilderness. The fame, wealth and power offered by Satan are tempting that many cannot resist. Celebrities and public figures often make choices that compromise their moral values in exchange for immediate success. This unbridled pursuit of fame is reminiscent of the story of Esau, who traded his birthright, something of eternal value, for a simple plate of food. Thus, the Bible warns us about the dangers of giving in to the temptations of the world. It is interesting to observe how this exchange of values occurs in a subtle way. Many celebrities start their careers with good intentions, but over time, they find themselves immersed in a system that pressures them to compromise their principles. The millionaire contracts, the promise of global success and the adulation of fans create an atmosphere where the value of integrity is put aside. It reminds us of the temptation Satan presented to Jesus. All these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Matthew 4, 9. How many times do we see celebrities who apparently love success but lose their essence in the process? This trade-off between integrity and success is something that affects ordinary people as well. Although we are not all in the media spotlight, the same temptations are present in our lives. At work, in finances, in our daily choices, we are tempted to compromise our principles in exchange for quick gains or recognition. However, the Bible is clear in reminding us that the rewards of this world are fleeting. As we saw in Mark 8.36, it asks, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? This is a reminder that earthly success can never compare to the eternal wealth that God offers us. In addition to moral choices, many celebrities also find themselves involved in practices that remind us of ancient occult rituals. There are stories of artists who claim to have made pacts or engaged in behavior that clearly opposes God's teachings. This leads us to reflect on how Satan's influence continues to be active today, offering fame and fortune in exchange for the soul. The Bible warns us that the devil is a liar and the father of lies, John 8:44. And that is exactly what we see in these examples, false promises that lead to spiritual destruction. However, we must remember that not everyone who achieves success falls into the traps of the enemy. There are celebrities who keep their faith intact and use their influence to glorify God. They are examples that it is possible to achieve earthly success without compromising faith. These figures show us that even in such a challenging environment, it is possible to resist temptations while remaining faithful to Christian values. A practical example of this is the importance of choosing the influences we follow well, just as it is vital for Christians to surround ourselves with people who strengthen their faith. We must also carefully select the examples we follow in the world of entertainment.
What many don't realize is that by compromising their values for fame and fortune, they end up losing the most precious of all, their inner peace and connection with God. No matter how much a person achieves in material terms, there will always be a void when he strays from the Creator. Satan uses the promise of wealth and recognition to lead people astray. But true satisfaction can only be found in Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus resisted temptations, we are also called to resist the seductive offers of the world and seek that which has eternal value. In addition, modern entertainment often glorifies behaviors that are contrary to the Bible. Movies, music, and TV shows often promote the idea that success is worth any sacrifice, even if it means compromising morals. This creates a culture where the focus is on winning at any cost. However, as followers of Jesus, we are called to a life of integrity and commitment to God's teachings. We are not to conform to the world's standards, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, as described in Romans 12, 2. Finally, this parallel between Satan's temptations and the choices made by many in the modern world is a reminder that regardless of the era, the spiritual battle continues. Satan uses the same tactics he used with Jesus, offering power, fame and fortune, but always at a very high spiritual price. The question that remains is, to what extent are we willing to compromise our principles? As Christians, we are called to follow Jesus' example, resisting the offers of the enemy and seeking first the kingdom of God, knowing that all other things will be added to us. Matthew 6.33 Compromising moral values for worldly gain is one of Satan's oldest strategies. From biblical times to the present day, people have faced the temptation to trade their integrity for promises of success, wealth, or power. However, the Bible is clear in warning us about the price we pay when we make these choices. Mark 8.36 asks, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? This is a profound question that leads us to reflect on what is really worthwhile in our life. The promises of fame and fortune may seem irresistible, but the spiritual cost is too high. This moral cost goes far beyond simply losing the peace. When a person compromises their values, they turn away from God and make room for Satan's influence in their lives. This does not happen all at once. It is a subtle and gradual process. Often the first step is small, almost imperceptible, but over time the person will move further and further away from the path of God. It's like Esau, who traded his birthright for a plate of food. He didn't realize the gravity of his decision until it was too late. So it is with us when we make seemingly insignificant moral concessions. The modern world is littered with examples of people who have paid a high price for their moral commitments. In the search for success, many end up engaging in immoral practices, whether financial, professional or personal. The result is almost always the same. An inner emptiness that cannot be filled by anything the world offers. When a person gives up their values to gain the world, they lose what really matters, their connection to God and consequently eternal salvation. Satan is a master at making these trade-offs seem advantageous, but the Bible repeatedly warns us that there is no true gain outside of God's way. Modern entertainment, for example, is an environment where such moral compromises are often made. Celebrities are pressured to adopt behaviors that go against biblical teachings in exchange for popularity and success. They engage in scandals, occult rituals, and practices that corrupt the soul. And what appears to be glamour is actually a path to destruction. Just as Satan offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world, he continues to offer the same to those who are willing to pay the price. And the price is nothing less than the soul. However, the cost is not only spiritual. People who compromise their values also pay an emotional and psychological price. They lose peace of mind, live with guilt and regret, and often end up losing what they fought so hard to achieve. The Bible shows us that Satan's way is illusory. It promises temporary glories, but it leads to eternal destruction. It's like building a house on sand. When the storms come, it collapses. The plea here is for us to be steadfast in our moral commitments, knowing that even when God's path seems difficult, He is the only one that leads us to true peace and fulfillment. This cost is also seen in the impact these choices have on others. 
When a person compromises their values, they not only affect themselves but also their family, friends, and even the society around them. Often, the effects of a wrong moral choice can be felt for generations. This is why the Bible calls us to live according to God's principles, knowing that our actions have consequences that go far beyond ourselves. By choosing to follow God's way, we are investing not only in our own lives, but in the lives of those we love. Mark 8.36 is not only a warning, but also an opportunity for us to reflect on our own choices. We all face temptations on a daily basis, and often those temptations come disguised as opportunities for success. However, it is crucial that we have the discernment to see beyond the surface and understand the true cost of these choices. Just as Jesus resisted Satan's offerings in the wilderness, we are also called to resist. And the strength for that endurance comes from our faith in God and our trust in the eternal promises he has given us. As we reflect on the cost of moral compromises, we are led to an inescapable conclusion. Nothing in this world is worth it if it takes us away from God. Fame, fortune, and success are temporary, but our soul is eternal. As followers of Jesus, we must be willing to sacrifice worldly gains if it means staying true to God's teachings. That is the real victory. The world may offer momentary glories, but the peace and salvation that come from God are unparalleled. And that's the choice we all have to make every day. After all that has been shared, the question that remains is, what are you going to do with this knowledge? The truths we have just explored cannot be ignored, and the choices you make from now on will echo for eternity. Are you willing to compromise your morals for a temporary reward, or are you going to seek what really matters, your salvation? The cost of moral compromises is too high, and you can see all around you the consequences of this. So what are you going to do? Stop for a moment and reflect. What are the areas of your life that need to be realigned with the teachings of Jesus? What values have you been negotiating in exchange for immediate pleasures? Now is the time to act. Share this message with others. If the video touched your heart, imagine the impact it can have on the lives of many others. Leave your like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to continue learning about these deep and transformative topics. And now, before ending another video, let's say a prayer together. We pray, Lord God, at this time, I come before you with a broken heart and willing to hear your voice. I recognize that I have often fallen into the traps of the enemy, seeking temporary pleasures that have led me away from you. But today, Lord, I want to be reconciled with you. I ask forgiveness for my sins, and I ask you to strengthen me to resist the temptations of this world. Reveal your will for my life, Father, and guide me in your ways. I surrender control of my life into your hands and trust that you have the best for me. May your Holy Spirit lead me and help me make choices that honor your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you all. See you in the next videos. As we close another chapter together, I know some questions might still echo in your mind. You may be wondering how to navigate the complexities of spiritual life and unlock a path of abundance and blessings. The journey is challenging, but you don't have to walk it alone. In the comments, you'll find a powerful key to this door many seek to open. The ebook, Discover Prosperity with God, the ultimate guide to overcoming spiritual challenges and living a life of abundance. This is not just any book. It is the fruit of years of research, experience, and profound revelations now within your reach. Imagine overcoming the barriers that prevent your spiritual and financial growth. Think of the comfort and security of living a life aligned with the promises of prosperity meant for you. This ebook is more than words on a page. It's a map to the treasure you deserve. Join the many who are already on a path illuminated by faith and knowledge. The power to transform your life is just a click away. Check it out now in the comments and start your journey to a life of fulfillment and prosperity. Remember, prosperity with God is not just a distant dream. It's a promise waiting to be fulfilled. With this guide, you're one step closer to making it a reality. Your success story begins today.